Well, uh, hello, everybody. We have a really good opportunity. This is, you know, pop up podcast today. I'm going to be you know, talking with a wonderful person here. And I tell you, the, the, the subject matter that we're going to be talking about is serious. Right? It is, you know, we were, uh, Rebecca and I, Rebecca Span, and I have been talking about business and the blue moves that sometimes business owners feel and what to do about them, right? So we decided to get together. We're in a, a coffee shop right now, so you're hearing stuff in the background. That's all right. We wanted to get this information to you because we thought it would be really, really good, especially the fact that Christmas has just ended and there's all kind of ups and downs in terms of emotion, and, and, but you're still in business. Yep. So the blue moves and business... The business owners' ups and downs. Rebecca, what what is that all about? I mean, what's happening outside of the business that could be affecting the business? So you have everything from family issues um, between marriages, children, in-laws, immediate family or birth family. Then you can be handled with personal identity issues while still navigating your business. Um, Some people are dealing with health issues as well. So if you look at a combination of those things, I can definitely make an individual um, be in a place that can feel extremely lonely. Um, and then when you have a business, you have to put on your business face. So you can't allow these things that are happening to you in your personal life to affect your business because then you look at your bottom line and it can be drastically um, either improved or um, affected. So, sure. Yeah. 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 And that's why when I talk about blue moves in business, um, you know, I, I was reading the other day, uh, a guy came out and talked about his. Um, depression in entrepreneurship. He's an entrepreneur, and he uh, and I was inspired by that. But we had talked about putting on a panel anyway, getting some people together. And I wanted to dig a little deeper. I wanted to go specific on this, you know, about African Americans, yeah, blacks, mm-hmm. blue moves and business, mm-hmm. you know, because we now have to deal with navigating the racism spectrum yeah. and try to get out there and get our grind on, yeah. right? Yeah. So what would you say? that you may have experienced being an entrepreneur yourself, African-American uh, uh, entrepreneur, and having to navigate those blue moves in business? Um, one thing that I will say is that having a very strong support system can be extremely helpful. Um, I am a therapist, so of course, I hear a lot every single day about what other people are experiencing. Um, anxiety, to depression, and stress, which are the areas on which I primarily focus on for women. Um, so for myself, you know, there are days where I don't want to get up, um, especially if the weather is bad, seasonal so affective disorder is real. Sad. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, but the thing that has helped me the most is having a really strong support system. And in having that support system, um, being able to know that I can reach out to those people when I need their help and being honest with myself, um, being authentic and also allowing myself to have those days, acknowledge those feelings. And if I feel them, allow me to go through that mode and that, that mood and that um, experience at the moment. But then after that, being able to say, OK, this is what I have to go and do the rest of today. So yeah. being able to give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. I love that. You said be honest with yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. And give yourself grace. And mm-hmm. you talk about being honest with yourself. But first, let's get let's get to your your uh, company. Tell us a little bit about your company, if you would. So I am the owner um, of About You Counseling and Consulting. I am a licensed professional counselor, and I focus on treating millennial women with anxiety, depression, and stress. So, um, yeah, every day I go in and I see clients who are dealing with a wide um, range of issues, from family issues, to yeah. work and career stress, to parenting, to self-identity, to relationship issues. So, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, and that's a great thing. That's why I wanted to, you know, connect with you. And we're going to be putting on this panel a little bit later, mm-hmm. having African-American people come on and talk about from their, our perspective, yeah, right? Some of the things that affect us, A, from an African-American perspective, yeah. and B, you know, when we're in business, you know, when we're dealing with our entrepreneurship journey, 
And I think it was important that um, that we get this information out there to folks so that they don't feel alone, right? And I wanted to talk about it from an entrepreneur's perspective yeah. because, you know, I haven't really, I can't say that I felt depression, but I can tell you that there are those times that those blue moons happen. That's why I didn't want to just totally call it, you know, depression. I wanted to call it, hey, what about what about the moves that happen? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about some of the other moves that, that go on. What about anxiety? Do you see a lot of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're naturally an introverted person, meaning that, um, you know, you prefer to be by yourself, you prefer to uh, spend time alone instead of being in a room full of people, or you're more introspective versus an extrovert who is a person who doesn't mind networking and you know, having several different meetings and communicating with others as it pertains to their personality. Mm -hmm. If you're an introvert, it may be really, really difficult for you to come out of that shell to market yourself or to even go to a networking event. And sometimes that's really, really hard. Um, So if you are introverted, you're extroverted. I'll say that as well, because you can be extroverted but still have some type of anxiety with going into an environment, having to do a speaking engagement, marketing yourself. It's all very anxiety provoking. So, um, um, once again, just going back to recognizing how you feel and acknowledging that and then figuring out, okay, what do I need to do so when I get sure. in these spaces, I can effectively navigate where I, I tell you, that that's so important. I had been doing some research on how people are succeeding despite their personas, right? And I've been hearing a lot of information about people putting on mm-hmm. yeah. a persona, right? Uh, I think they were, uh, there was Sasha Fierce, mm-hmm. right? Everybody know who that is, right? Absolutely. And she yeah. had to use that, from what I understand, had yeah. to use that to come out of the church environment that she was in mm-hmm. to become, you know, this super duper pop star, right. yeah. if you will. She had to put on a different persona, yes. right? In other words, we got to put on our superpowers. Mm-hmm. I've heard about writers. You know, as a writer myself, I understand that. I want to be able to go, oh, oh, I didn't make that mistake. That was that was writer Randy or whatever. Right. But being able to put on that different skin, if you will, mm-hmm. that, that cape, if you will, mm-hmm. is that something that you kind of recommend or do you find people are still, they suffer from putting on it and not being able to take it off? So, honestly, I am one about authenticity. Um, I feel like the more you create different personas, the more you do different things and put on different masks, that may be very, very hard for you. Because, as you said, what about the person who struggles with taking it off? Also, um, what about the person who loses their true identity because they have that mask on all the time? So, I would be very careful about creating a whole different persona. You may have an agreement with yourself that says, okay, in order for me to do this, I need to take some deep breaths, I need to practice some mindfulness, I need to be in this space so that I can effectively do this, but I don't recommend taking on a completely different personality because that may not be effective for everyone. So once again, just going back to being authentic, knowing what your needs are, recognizing those, being honest with yourself, and then making sure that you're able to be yourself, maybe with some adjustments, sure. with yeah. some additional um, skills needed, but yeah. Yeah, so now you have two sides of it, right? Some people say, hey, in order to be uh, to jump into another persona or another way of doing something, or what you know, another way of doing something that you may have to put on a persona and then you're saying hey look that authentic self Mm -hmm. is the best self is that what i'm hearing that's what i suggest especially as being a therapist because i see when people have a struggle in putting on masks and when they struggle in the workplace or they struggle in their family because they're being something that they're not and so internally they're really really struggling because they're not able to fully express themselves in their their true way so yeah um as a therapist i would suggest kind of being more authentic then taking on a totally different person now. Yeah, and I tell you, if you want to talk about this event that you have coming up, I'll have this prop, this podcast up probably by then. Okay. But um, you've got a, uh, an event coming up that when I looked at the flyer, I says, oh, late. hey, wait a minute. These are all ladies. Absolutely. African-American ladies. Yep, right? women of color. Um, women of color. Yeah, here in Grand Rapids. So um, January 18th, 2020, from 6 o'clock to 10 p.m., we'll be at the link 
which is at 1167 Madison. Um, it'll be myself. Um, the evening will be hosted by myself and Elia Webster. Um, she is a Weber, I'm sorry. Um, she is a local artist. And so women will be able to come, purchase tickets. Tickets start at $25, $25 if you don't want to paint. And then the other ticket is $45 if you would like to paint. Um, so is this a little paint therapy? Yeah, it'll be painting. <laughs> we'll have a live DJ, DJ um, Venus Flytrap. We'll have catered food. We'll have drinks. We'll have vendors in the building. How cool is that? Yeah. And then you're going to be talking about... Yeah, so the four therapy. therapists, um, Janae cool Beville, yep, uh, April Oglesby, Shane McNichols, and Aaron Williams will be in the house. They'll be speaking 20 minutes apiece about different topics that women endure and face every single day. So um, the purpose behind what we're going to do is, um, oh, and I forgot to say, all the proceeds will be given to a local nonprofit that is Oh, how nice is that? So, yeah, I was very intentional about wanting to make sure that... Um, not only will she support it, but that everyone in the community will be able to benefit from this. Sure. Um, the reason why I wanted to do it is because I have been blessed by beyond measure in my business. And so a lot of times I do recommend women to other therapists, and these therapists are, you know, some of the things that I recommend people to. Sure, yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? I want to be able to host and to showcase the amazing things that these women are doing in the community. And not only um, that, but also so that mental health is more of a normal conversation in our community, yeah, yeah. Um, especially for people of color. It's really, really hard to say, yeah. okay, I'm in therapy. You know, there's been a lot of stigmas out there. Um, we've been taught what stays in our, what happens in our house stays in our house. We don't talk about our family issues or whatever, or just be strong. And just want to break down those barriers so that That's people good. can get to a place where they're comfortable and being themselves. So, um, it's just, honestly, for me, it's just a uh, labor of love, giving back to the community and allowing people to find a therapist. One of the posts that I made, I said, ladies, are you looking for a therapist? This is the night when you can come out here four different therapists speaking. You may find one. Pick somebody. Absolutely. I love that. So, yeah, that is. And that's one of the reasons why, again, I wanted to do this pop-up podcast. I know you got to go to another uh, appointment. And, you know, some of the other things that we're going to be doing a little bit later as we convene this panel of therapists in the area of Grand Rapids, right? And that kicks off the idea that, you know what, guess what? They look like you. Yeah, absolutely. They look like you and you can utilize them. Absolutely. When we put this together, it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to get some que uh, some questions answered, mm -hmm. right? And from the sensibility of us. And I love that idea. So I look forward to that with you. And I'm going to go ahead and let you go this pop-up uh, podcast. <laughs> Thank you. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, guys. I hope you got some value from this. I want you guys to be able to contact Rebecca here. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not a therapist, but I want to have this conversation so that you guys can go you know I, I can reach out to her i like i like her rap i like what's happening here is there a place where they can reach you the best um you can follow me on facebook at about you about y-o-u counseling and consulting i'm also on instagram that's about you gr um about you counseling gr i'm sorry you can also email me at contact at about you cc.com and you can call me at 616-259-6266. Okay, can we get that uh, one more time? 616. 616-259-6266. All right, you guys, I've heard it here. We hope to see you and talk with you next time. This is going to be awesome. I hope you get a little bit of value from it and be able to contact her to go deeper. We'll talk to you next time.